Hello everybody, and a very warm welcome to LMT YouTube channel. Why Prince Harry is worried about Archie's future. Like most of us, Prince Harry has had a very tumultuous 2020. From giving up his royal duties and relocating to California with wife Meghan Markle, to dealing with family drama and another controversial season of The Crown unfolding on Netflix, the Duke and Duchess of Sussex have faced plenty of challenges in recent months. Harry's brother, Prince William, reportedly contracted COVID-19, and in November 2020, Meghan revealed that she'd suffered a miscarriage. On top of those personal struggles, Harry has made it clear that climate change and the state of the natural world also weigh heavy on his mind, particularly when he thinks about his son's future. Prince Harry said in a video for the Water Bear Network, a free streaming service of conservation content. The moment you become a father, everything really does change because you start to realize, well, what is the point in bringing a new person into this world? When they get to your age and it's on fire, we can't steal their future. We really can't. That's not the job we're here for. Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor celebrated his first birthday in May 2020 and his proud papa is determined to make sure he grows up on a planet that is suitable for many happy birthdays to come. Here's what Prince Harry is doing to promote a bright future for his son and for kids everywhere. What? Prince Harry hopes activism will help the next generation. To protect the next generation, the Duke of Sussex helped launch the Water Bear Network, a free streaming platform that serves as an educational tool for environmental conservatism. Prince Harry was so inspired by the birth of his son, Archie, that he even formed a non-profit organization with Meghan Markle named, after their little boy, Archwell. Prince Harry also acts as the president of African Parks, and a patron of rhino conservation Botswana. His recent partnership with the Water Bear Network is just another step toward educating others about threats facing wildlife and the environment. In a video filmed for Water Bear from his Southern California home, Prince Harry said, being in nature is the most healing part of life. He wants the organization to capitalize on a community of doers and put real action behind conservation efforts. The Duke explained, urging others to do their part to ensure the next generation has a healthy planet. For me, it's about putting the do's behind the says. Another analysis. Meghan Markle credits this one unglamorous job for shaping her. Even though Meghan, Duchess of Sussex and Prince Harry have stepped down from royal duties and are living a quieter life in Montecito, California, it is difficult to imagine Meghan doing any other work than the giving and humanitarian roles that we are used to seeing her take on. We have to remember, though, that Meghan wasn't born into royalty like her husband, and during her early years, she certainly wasn't in the public eye like he was. As a teenager and young adult, the now Duchess of Sussex took on completely relatable jobs, especially when she was working toward becoming a successful actress. In fact, she did a number of things, such as working at a frozen yogurt shop, and even teaching calligraphy classes at a local store. It is refreshing to know that Megan did some things that the rest of us have certainly done in order to pay the bills, and it would appear as if she has not forgotten those days at all. In fact, Megan credits this one unglamorous job for shaping her. Meghan Markle is no stranger to volunteer work. Megan is an amazing person, but there still may be some who aren't all that familiar with her. Born and raised in Los Angeles, she always knew that acting was something that she wanted to pursue. After graduating from Northwestern University, she did just that. Megan is also known for volunteering and working as an advocate for women's rights, so it is safe to say that she is used to taking on several roles at once. Her royal love story with Prince Harry began when the two of them were introduced on a blind date in July 2016. Things moved pretty quickly from there, with the couple getting engaged in 2017, married in 2018, and welcoming their first child, 
a son named Archie Harrison about a year later. Meghan Markle credits this one unglamorous job for shaping her. So, what was it that the Duchess once did that she credits for shaping her? As it turns out, it wasn't her stint as a restaurant hostess or her gig as a briefcase girl on a popular game show. Instead, during a trip to an Australian high school, Megan revealed that one of her first jobs was taking out the trash. Although it was likely something that most people didn't know about the former actress, it doesn't come as much of a surprise that she is proud to have done it and still talks about it to this day. What has Megan said about her former job? There are definitely people in the world who don't ever even look back and give their first job a second thought, but Megan is not one of them. In fact, she still sees the value that the job held and the lessons that it taught her, telling the students at the high school, taking out the trash made me the woman I am today. We all know that as a former working senior royal, Meghan has lived a pretty spectacular life for the past few years. Despite this, she looks back at what she did years ago and said to the high school students, you guys all remind me so much of myself when I was growing up. While Meghan's days of collecting trash are long behind her, we think that it is absolutely wonderful that she still sees the value in what she used to do, and she credits it toward contributing to her future. Looks like there is more to Megan than we thought, and it is simply fantastic that she shared it. In recent days, news agencies have reported that Megan has just had a miscarriage in July 2020. As a journalist, we want you to have a deeper view of this story. Meghan and Prince Harry handed out clothes to needy families just weeks after their miscarriage agony. The couple distributed supplies, clothes and diapers at a drive through run by Los Angeles charity Baby to Baby in August, with the 39-year-old mum today revealing she had endured the heartbreak of a miscarriage in July. The event saw families in need given basic necessities, thanks to the charity. And despite their heartbreak behind the scenes, Meghan and Harry threw themselves into the charity work. At the time, Meghan wore loose cocky shorts with a white shirt and trainers while Harry wore a baseball hat as they helped out families with both wearing face coverings to stop the spread of coronavirus. Sweet photographs showed the Duchess helping one little boy with his backpack while Harry cheerfully gave families the thumbs up sign. At the time, Baby to Baby praised the couple, saying, Thank you for putting smiles on the faces of the children and families we serve and helping us provide the supplies, basic hygiene, and clothing every child deserves. The couple's charity work in August is all the more touching given the devastating miscarriage Megan today revealed she had had suffered just weeks earlier. The mom of one penned a deeply personal essay for the New York Times saying she and Harry had gone through unbearable grief after the miscarriage, recalling the devastating morning in July the Duchess said she had been looking after her son Archie, who would have been about 14 months old at the time when she felt a sharp cramp. In the moving piece, she wrote, after changing his diaper, I felt a sharp cramp. I dropped to the floor with him in my arms, humming a lullaby to keep us both calm. The cheerful tune a stark contrast to my sense that something was not right. I knew as I clutched my firstborn child that I was losing my second. Hours later, I lay in a hospital bed, holding my husband's hand. I felt the clamminess of his palm and kissed his knuckles, wet from both our tears, staring at the cold white walls. My eyes glazed over. I tried to imagine how we'd heal. Megan said she had decided to speak out about her loss because miscarriage was still a taboo subject which led to a cycle of solitary mourning. The former actress said she wanted to encourage people to ask, are you okay? this holiday season. In the touching essay, she added, sitting in a hospital bed, watching my husband's heart break as he tried to hold the shattered pieces of mine, I realized that the only way to begin to heal is to first ask, are you okay? A source close to the Duchess of Sussex today said, Megan is currently in good health. The source said, the couple had taken time to process what happened and made the decision to talk about it publicly after realizing how common miscarriages are. Buckingham Palace, Kensington Palace, and Clarence House said they would not comment as it was a deeply personal matter. But a royal source said there is understandable sadness in the family. 
Photographer Arthur Edwards today expressed his condolences to the couple, saying the royal family would have been very upset and sent messages of support. Meghan and Harry were married in May 2018 at St. George's Chapel, going on to welcome son Archie Harrison Mountbatten Windsor into the world a year later. The couple kept the birth of Archie very private and chose not to reveal the hospital where he would be born or pose for pictures with him immediately after his arrival. His christening was also a private affair. When they introduced Archie to the world today, after his birth, the parents gushed over his arrival. New mum Megan said, at the time, it's magic, it's pretty amazing. I have the two best guys in the world so I'm really happy. She added, he has the sweetest temperament, he's really calm. The couple have made no secret of their desire for a second child, but they previously said to would be their limit for environmental reasons. The couple quit the royal family in January this year before moving to the U.S. a few months later. They then bought their own home in Santa Barbara, California in July. Finding freedom was serialized in the Times and Sunday Times at the end of July. It is not the first time the members of the royal family have opened up about suffering from miscarriages. In 2018, Zara Tyndall, the Queen's granddaughter, revealed she suffered a second miscarriage shortly after losing her unborn child in 2016. She and husband Mike Tyndall had just announced the pregnancy a month before. In an interview with The Sunday Times, Zara said, I had to go through having the baby because it was so far along. I then had another miscarriage really early on. In December 2001, Sophie the Countess of Wessex, the wife of Prince Edward, also had to be rushed to hospital after suffering from an ectopic pregnancy. Check out one of our newest videos right here, plus even more LMT videos about your favorite stuff. For coming soon, subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one. Stop.